Ever wondered where the boundary of our solar system lies? Is it up until the orbit of Pluto? The Kuiper Belt? Beyond? You may have heard that the Voyager spacecrafts have already left the solar system, their current position putting them well beyond the orbit of Pluto. But in reality, to say they have left the solar system is not really true. So how do we define the edge of a solar system? And following on from that, how big can solar systems get? Let's look first of all at where the voyages are, and why some say they have left the solar system. Astonishingly, the voyages, which launched in 1977, are still operational today, although at reduced capacities. Their power sources are radioisotope thermoelectric generators, which are great at providing power without the need of solar panels. However, with every passing year, the radioactive material degrades, producing less power. They are currently operating with about half the power they had when they started, meaning a few of the instruments have had to be turned off. What they are currently monitoring is the magnetic field environment of deep space, and its interactions with the solar wind. Of particular interest to scientists is the boundary where the magnetic field and the solar wind of the Sun are overcome by interstellar wind, this boundary known as the heliopause. Scientists think that Voyager 1 crossed this boundary in 2012, and Voyager 2 crossed it in 2018, both being the only spacecraft to make it into interstellar space so far. What they found out on their journey is that this boundary is not a spherical ball around the Sun, but is rather bubbly and asymmetrical. And much like planets facing into the Sun with their magnetic fields trailing behind them because of interactions with the solar wind, the Sun's magnetic field also trails behind against the interstellar wind. As the solar system orbits the center of the Milky Way, it travels at over 800,000 kilometers per hour. As it moves, it passes through what is known as the interstellar medium at relative speeds of 80,000 km an hour. This creates a kind of wind effect on the magnetic field of the Sun, leaving a tail in the interstellar wind's wake. But as fantastic as the Voyager mission is, reaching interstellar space is not the same as reaching the edge of the solar system. The edge of the solar system is defined by gravitational influences, a boundary known as a hill sphere. Although it should be noted that this is not really a sphere either, I'll come to that in a bit. A hill sphere is the region around an object where the gravitational pull of that object overcomes the gravitational pull of anything else. For instance, the Moon orbits the Earth because it is within the Earth's hill sphere. It's close enough that the Earth's gravitational exertion on the Moon dominates the Sun's. Satellites orbiting the Moon are within the Moon's hill sphere, where the Moon's gravity at that distance has a greater pull than that of the Earth and the Sun. And everything orbiting the Sun is within the Sun's hill sphere, where the Sun's gravity overcomes that of nearby stars. This is the true boundary of the solar system. Now, looking at our local neighborhood of stars, we find that they are unevenly distributed around us. This means that the Sun's hill sphere isn't really spherical. Take the Alpha Centauri system, for instance. It is roughly four light years away from us, yet Alpha Centauri contains two Sun-like stars, so its total gravitational influence will be greater than the Sun's, pushing the boundary of that part of the hill sphere closer to the Sun. On the other hand, looking the opposite direction to Bernard's star, we have a red dwarf star that is six light years away and much less massive than our star. So the Sun's gravitational influence would stretch much further in that direction. And even if an object is orbiting within the Sun's hill sphere near the boundary, its orbit is very precarious. The gravity of the Sun here is incredibly weak. The object's orbit would be very slow, and the slightest perturbation might knock this object out of orbit. That's why astronomers currently think the furthest objects can safely orbit the Sun is up to a maximum distance of one light year, even though the Sun's hill sphere might stretch out for two to three light years. 
So, what's out there at that distance? Anything at all? Well, way beyond the Kuiper Belt, which is the asteroid belt beyond the orbit of Neptune, up to a distance of about 1 to 3 light years, is a region known as the Oort Cloud. We believe the Oort Cloud is a sparsely populated region surrounding the Sun, containing billions or even trillions of icy bodies. We believe that's where a small percentage of the long period comets come from. Comets which have orbits of tens to hundreds of thousands of years long. To give you some perspective about the size of this cloud, it will take Voyager 1 300 years just to reach the beginning of the Oort Cloud and potentially 30,000 to 150,000 years to pass through it. Astronomical distances are simply mind-blowing. And remember, at this distance, we are considered to still be within our own solar system. Now imagine how many solar systems there are out there. Which brings me on to the final point of this video. How big can solar systems get? Well, it's something we can't know for sure, although we can have an educated guess about what it would look like. We'll stick strictly to stars for this thought experiment. To include black holes would be to include entire galaxies. The theoretical limit of a star is around 150 solar masses, or 150 times the mass of our Sun. Although, there are some stars out there that test this theory, like the most massive star that we know of, R136A1, which is apparently 300 solar masses. Now, this star resides in a very densely packed cluster, so although it is massive, its gravity competes with a lot of nearby stars. This reduces the size of its hill sphere considerably. Let's say a star of this size was somehow ejected from its local cluster, even its local galaxy, and finds itself completely alone in space with no other gravitational forces for many light years in any direction. The only other competing mass is other galaxies themselves. That means, with nothing competing against it, such a solar system could be hundreds to thousands of light years across, comparable in size to a galaxy, depending on the distances involved. In a universe where only this star and a second smaller object exist, that second object could be billions of light years away and still be in orbit. Because gravity doesn't care how far away the objects are, it will still have an influence on them. In such a universe, the only escape for the second object from the gravitational pull of the larger object would be to have an infinite distance between the two, which isn't possible. So, there we have it. Solar systems are already mind-bogglingly large, and under the right circumstances, they can be far, far larger still. The thought that sticks with me after researching all this is that the universe truly is a fascinating place. Thanks for watching. For a limited time and for a few select countries, if you already have YouTube Premium, you can now become a member of a channel for free. And if you find value in these videos, consider supporting Astrum to enable me to make more videos like these in the future. There are now regular polls as rewards for signing up, helping me pick topics and thumbnails for future videos. If you want to find out more, click the join button below this video. And even if you don't sign up, please know that you are also supporting me by watching and sharing my videos, and I'm really grateful. And with that, all the best, and see you next time.